Welcome back. I'm Charles Lewis, the Austin Area Realtor who brings you topics and discussions that will help you make better decisions when you buy, sell, or invest in real estate. Today, I'm going to let you in on a secret about home prices in the Austin area that nobody else out there is going to tell you about. Now, anybody out there could tell you about how fast home prices have gone up. They can quote statistics like that in the last five years, across the entire Austin metro, home values have doubled. And remember, that's the average across the metro. There are some neighborhoods where that appreciation rate was even higher. Now, another thing anybody out there can tell you about is how fast interest rates have increased. We started the year at around 3% and we're currently around 7 Interest rates have not gone up that fast in over 40 years. Now, since those higher interest rates impact your buying power, another thing anybody out there can tell you about is how the affordability gap is growing wider and wider and how many potential home buyers have been priced out of the market. But what's the one thing they aren't telling you? What's the secret nobody wants you to know? Well, it relates to one of the major reasons why prices shot up so fast over the last several years. The secret I'm going to reveal to you is that one of the same reasons prices went up so fast is the exact same reasons why we can expect them to continue to decline and much faster than most experts are forecasting. And if you stick around for this video, I'm going to tell you all about it. Several factors coalesced to form the perfect storm which created the pandemic housing boom. First, the work from home option enabled someone to keep the same high paying job and work from anywhere in the country. This enabled buyers with money and equity to leave high priced coastal cities and outspend local buyers in markets like Boise, Idaho. Now, as the prices for real estate began to skyrocket, historically low mortgage rates, which bottomed at 2.65% in January 2021, made mortgage payments more affordable. In the middle of all this, there was low inventory and very favorable first-time millennial homebuyer demographics. But the one thing nobody is talking about, which I'm going to argue was the most significant factor that drove prices higher, was the investor mania. It was unlike anything we've seen in the U.S. housing market since the early 2000s housing bubble. Average Joes tapped their home equity and set out to build Airbnb empires. Institutional investors like Blackstone-owned Home Partners of America rapidly expanded their single-family home portfolios. Home builders, who didn't want to miss out on the boom, broke ground on a record number of houses. And of course, there were the iBuyers, like Open Door, Redfin, and Zillow, who used computer algorithms to speed up the buying process. When you put it all together, low mortgage rates, record appreciation, and soaring rents, it made real estate irresistible for investors. It brought out everyone from home flippers and mom and pop landlords to big Wall Street firms who had what seemed like an endless supply of money. But if you fast forward to today, that investor mania has turned into investor panic. The ongoing housing correction has scared most of those investors to the sidelines. Nationally, home prices have fallen 1.6% between June and September which is the first time national home prices have declined since 2012. Here in the Austin Metro, we saw some of the highest appreciation rates in the country during the boom, but now we are seeing the highest median price decline percentages in the entire United States. Most housing market economists are not forecasting a correction on the scale of the great financial crisis when U.S. home prices fell 27% between 06 and 2012. But some are beginning to acknowledge that this current home price correction is sharper than it was in 2006. Before we get into it, there are two key concepts we need to understand. The first is the methodology used to determine home values. Ultimately, your house is worth what a qualified buyer is willing to pay for it. But an estimate of that value is determined by looking at what comparable houses in the same area sold for in the recent past. These are called comparable sales or comps. This method is used to determine everything from the price you list the house for to the tax appraisal value, which is used to calculate your property taxes. Let's look at a simple example. Let's say there are 200 houses in a neighborhood. These houses were built within a few years of each other, and there were only a handful of builders who built the neighborhood. Now the houses don't look identical, but there are similarities. They are comparable. In any given time period, a certain percentage of those houses are going to turn over. The current owner sells her house and the buyer becomes a new resident of the neighborhood. Now, very rarely is it a high percentage, but to make the math easy, let's say 10% of these homes turn over every year, which means on average, there are 20 houses sold every year or 10 every six months. So depending upon the time period you might be looking at, somewhere between five to 10% of these houses will determine the value of the other 90 to 95%. 
Now let's say the median home value in this neighborhood was $400,000 and we entered a period like we saw in the last couple of years where every six months there are 10 houses listed for sale, but there are now 40 buyers competing to buy them. The price those buyers are willing to pay goes up because they outbid each other. Now only 5 to 10% of the houses in the neighborhood are actually sold, but the median value of everybody's house goes up, let's say 30% to 520,000. Now the homeowners who never put their house in the market might not be happy with the new property tax bills, but since the value of their house has increased, they now have more equity. So at least on paper, they are wealthier. But what happens when the market shifts the other way? Well, that's the second concept we need to understand. I can't tell you how many times I've heard this argument. The current market shift is not the same as 2008 because homeowners have equity. They're not upside down in their mortgages and we're not seeing a high number of foreclosures. Now that all might be true, but the one thing we do have in this current market are a lot of investor-owned properties, including those properties owned by the iBuyers. Last November, Zillow posted a $500 million loss and shut down their home buying division. At that time, they had about $300 million in inventory, and over the course of the next couple of months, they discounted those homes and sold them all off. Now, what you may not know is Zillow got very lucky. They started discounting those homes in early 2022. So they were selling those houses during the last months of the buyer frenzy, where multiple buyers interested in the same house outbid each other and paid over list price. Now back when Zillow first announced they were shutting down their iBuying division, all the other iBuyers said they didn't have any concerns because they were still profitable, which meant they kept buying houses. But just a few months later, interest rates started to climb and all those buyers who were willing to pay more than list price, they disappeared, which meant days on market and the number of available homes skyrocketed. And those buy buyers began to see the number of their unsold houses growing. So they started discounting those houses in order to find buyers. Look at this example from the Austin area. This house was originally listed for $1.2 million. And over the course of a couple of months, the price was reduced $300,000 before they were able to sell it. Redfin alone has about $350 million in unsold inventory across the United States. And Glenn Kelman, the CEO, explained it like this. Investors want to get out first. The way they do that is to figure out where the lowest sale is and be 2% below that. And if it doesn't sell on the first weekend, move it down again. In other words, Kelman is suggesting that real estate investors, including Redfin's iBuyer business, which helped drive home prices up during the boom, will push prices down faster during the correction because it makes more sense for them to sell the house for what they can get and then take the loss on their P&L. So even though we don't have a large number of foreclosures in the current market, we do have a lot of those investor-owned homes. And if they continue to keep discounting them, the value of all the other houses will be impacted. Do you remember our example of how home values are determined in a neighborhood? If there are 200 houses in the neighborhood and 5 to 10% of them sell for less than what everybody thought the market value was, the value of all those unsold houses will adjust because of the comparable sales. Now it's going to take a while for most sellers to accept this reality. And the only ones who are going to be able to avoid coming to terms with it are the ones who have the luxury of waiting it out and hoping the market becomes more favorable at some point in the future. To an investor, that house is an expense. And unless they want to turn it into a rental, they're going to sell it for whatever they can get for it. If it's a primary residence though, renting it out might not be an option. If you complicate that even further, where the homeowner accepts a new job in another state, and then has to sell the house before they can buy something there, those sellers are going to be much more motivated to adjust their pricing more in line with what the current market says it's worth. I get emails, texts, and phone calls almost every day from people who are thinking about buying or selling real estate here in the Austin area, and I'd love to help you out too. If you like this video, you should check out this other one that I did. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell. All of my contact information is in the video description, so don't be shy. Let's make your real estate dreams come true.